<laughs> my dudes, what's happening, man? If it's one thing, if it's one thing you can't say about Trent Kanoka, is that <laughs> I don't, I don't leave you hanging. I don't leave you hanging. Um, I promised you a playthrough of Metal Gear Solid 4, and I'm delivering. But we're going to be taking it easy a little bit here. Now, now the reason why we're jumping right into Metal Gear Solid 4, if you are unaware, is that uh, uh, Metal Gear Solid 2, uh, right after that, they jumped back in time to do the whole 1960s timeline with Big Boss. And um, I don't, I won't even go into it. The founding of Foxhound and all that stuff. It's a really cool. It's a good story. Don't get me wrong. But we're in, we're in the modern timeline. We're in the 20... 20s okay or the 2010s this game takes place in 2014 a few years after the events of sons of liberty which we had just played if you want to see my playthrough of that i've got the shadow moses incident the first ps1 game in high definition on my channel in a playlist here i've also got the sons of liberty playthrough completed you can go and check those out if you haven't if you're just starting out with this one it's not a bad place to start but dude you're going to be a little bit lost you're not going to know what's going on so uh when we first saw this this was touted as solid snake's last outing by the way dudes i'm i'm playing this this is my late night game <laughs> sesh <laughs> so i'm keeping my volume a little bit reasonable there's not going to be any screaming it's not that, that kind of game anyway <laughs> i'm sure you can find some uh some gameplay videos of other people screaming at their games i'm not that dude uh because i'm gonna be playing this shit stealthy as fuck and so what we got when we first saw this um was this was touted as solid snake's final mission and we got this kind of intro sequence uh in one of the trailers where uh, we see this, who is this dude? Yeah, dude, that's, that's old snake. This isn't the young solid snake that we knew. This isn't the uh, the king of the ear pull uh, champion of the Alaskan Olympics. Mm -mm, no way, man. Uh, but here's the thing, it was only a few years after the events of Sons of Liberty. So what the fuck, what's going on, right? So there's a lot of that kind of what's going on thing going on. And uh, it gives you a lot of questions. And they did this like, this is the t the start screen. What game does this? Where you just got this super moody shot like this. Uh, by the way, I made a filter in Photoshop. <laughs> it's a gradient map effect to get this same look where all the blacks look like that brown. And then you get all these greens in the background. Anyway, uh, it gives it a distinct vibe, a distinct look. One, it also feels uh, very... Uh, uh, I guess you'd just say it like moody and atmospheric, but also drab and depressing. But check this out. So he loads up his gun. He's standing in front of this gravestone. Whose gravestone is it? We don't know. He kneels down. Touted as Solid Snake's final mission. This is this is some this is a pretty dire moment. Puts the gun, that's right, in his mouth. And then we hear a gunshot. This is not the outcome we wanted for our hero. We gotta stop it. We gotta do something about it. And so that's where this game takes place. Um, that actually is not the starting point of the game. The starting point of this game is the weirdest shit you've ever seen, dude. <laughs> In fact, I'm gonna try to just kind of just let you soak it in. I'll explain a little bit about what's going on after the fact, but let's rock and roll. Let's do it. Oh, oh first and foremost, let's check out some of the the extras, the things you got to know about, like there, there did not do a whole, Hey, previous missions. I was a little disappointed by that. I always love the previous mission stuff. Instead, what we get is, uh, this, uh, iPod thing and you can download, you could go online, you get codes and you can download different camouflage. Uh, Cause you can change out your camo throughout the game. So you can download different camouflage patterns. And, and I think there was a way like they give you these codes all the time. And then there were also musical tracks, Musical tracks from previous games. Yes, you can use your iPod throughout the game while you're infiltrating, <laughs> while you're on a stealth op, because it lowers your stress levels. You know what I'm saying? Um, and it was kind of neat. You find different musical tracks throughout the world as well. And, uh, and then also sometimes you would get these uh, codes and they would do this thing. It was like the first time I'd ever seen it in a game where you could download the podcast about the making of the game. And there were because they were doing a podcast. It was one of the first podcasts I had ever seen back in like 2007. They did podcasts leading up to the release of the game. 
And I was with uh, Ryan Payton. It, I think it was the guy who started uh, the Camouflage uh, Game Studios. They made uh, Republic. I had a thing about spelling things that way. I was going to work with him on something, but uh, he asked me what I thought of Japanese sumie painting as a video game art style, and I was like, uh, I don't know how you could do anything like that. <laughs> Okami kind of did it, I guess. He didn't like my answer, so <laughs> we didn't end up working together. Uh, anyway, so there isn't much in terms of the mission briefing. That's just cutscenes. It's like cutscenes that we're going to see during the gameplay, and I don't want to spoil anything, so we're going to kind of skip that. And I think, uh, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's just cutscenes from the game. Yeah. All right. Let's just start a let's start a new game. Now I, I promise you guys I'm gonna I'm gonna do a masterful playthrough again. <laughs> you're gonna get, you're gonna get the best. You're gonna get the numero uno best uh, Guns of the Patriots playthrough. So we're playing it on normal. And uh, yeah, check out this is uh, you ready to get weird? You ready to get real weird? Okay. Uh, cue the intro cutscenes. Now it's probably about right now that you're wondering what what the fuck. <laughs> what am I looking at, dude? Uh, so these are channels as if we're watching television in the timeline of the game, and <laughs> it is relevant to the game. What we're actually looking at is um, Octo Camo. So they're talking about how uh, octopuses or oct octopi octopus can uh, camouflage themselves to their environment, which is exactly what you can do with your camo. Because you got the Octo Camo technology. Yeah. And there's a lot of, there's a bunch of other channels. I, You know, you can only see a couple of them. If you start the game over, you can see more of them. But there's like cooking channels and there's like, uh, one of them's an interview with David Hayter, <laughs> which is weird. You can really see he would he would be a good snake. At least he would have been. I mean, this was 2008. I don't know now. I mean, maybe play old snake. Oh, I don't mean to bust on David Hayter. He's great. I think he's wonderful. Uh, loved him in Guyver. Anyway, uh, so yeah, you can see all these like commercials for different. Uh, you can see all these commercials for different uh, uh, PMCs. These are private military companies. So in the future, it's like everything is run by war. So yeah, you got like all these, they're just companies, you know, that just hire mercenaries. It's the war economy. They blew a huge budget on these, man. And I don't know if it was a good move because it kind of takes me out of the game when you see too much of the live action stuff. But hey, you know, to each his own. Nah, not everybody's gonna agree with me on that. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't begrudge you if you loved it. Hey, I'd say, hey, all right, roll with it, brother. This is just not my thing, you know. I would have rather they put that budget into like, I don't know, let's say, yeah, yeah, more stages, more levels. It's a long game already, though, so I don't know that I need that. This will probably take more than ten. Or 12 playthroughs, or playthroughs, 10 or 12 episodes. I think Sons of Liberty was 12 episodes. This one's probably going to beat that one out. It's a pretty pretty meaty game. I'd say a little bit more to it than the last one. Love this track, by the way. This is some really good stuff to put on while you're drawing or just doing some paintings, you know, that sort of a thing. Super moody, though. It sets the tone really sets the tone you know also something else that's very different about this one is that every other metal gear game that we had gotten up to this point it's like a stealth infiltration mission and in this time it, it, the whole concept of this game is infiltration in the midst of a battlefield so you've got soldiers everywhere all around you you are in the hot spot and uh you're still trying to like kind of keep low <laughs> you're trying to keep undercover you're trying to not stand out and so there are factional alliances, and, and this whole scene kind of sets some of that up without saying anything. It's like you're rolling into town with this resistance unit, you know. This is a ragtag band, you know, and he's just blending in. I don't know, I don't know how he bribed his way. <laughs> it's kind of 
didn't really set that up. I wonder if there was a novelization of this. If uh, I know they're working on one, or they made one in Japanese, not translated yet. But uh, I'd love to read that. Like, if there's a setup for how he got into this situation. War has changed. It's no longer about nations, ideologies, or ethnicity. It's an endless series of proxy battles fought by mercenaries and machines. War and its consumption of life has become a well-oiled machine. War has changed. ID tag soldiers carry ID tag weapons, use ID tag gear. Nanomachines inside their bodies enhance and regulate their abilities. Genetic control, information control, emotion control, battlefield control. Everything is monitored and kept under control. War has changed. The age of deterrence has become the age of control. All in the name of averting catastrophe from weapons of mass destruction. And he who controls the battlefield controls history. Cool story, bro. Uh, who who is he talking to? <laughs> it never really sets right with me when the character is just talking to the audience, telling them what's going on. Uh, it's the poetic diatribe, but uh, I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. So we've kind of we finally got a little bit of control here, man. Oh man, this game looks good. It still looks good, man. Uh, we're gonna check out our moves here. We'll crawl around for a little bit. Uh, check under here. Don't forget to check under there. I <laughs> think you get some like uh, just a couple of rations. You might need those. Man, you know, even though it's a uh, PS3, still looking good. By the way, there's only one way to play this game. It was only ever on the PS3. It was not released on any other system. And uh, you can't really emulate the PS3, uh, to my knowledge. Maybe they have by now. Maybe you can. I love that inventory system. Look at that. Left uh, L2 is like go through your inventory and then L1 is to use your items. R2 is to scroll through your weapons. You eventually get way too many items, though, and then you've got to choose which ones you're going to take into the field, which is still a tactical thing. I think they had to introduce that when they were doing uh, Snake Eater. That was kind of like the first time, because there was just too much gear. Too much metal gear. Too much stuff that you got to carry around, and you got to choose, like, well, I don't want to carry every damn gun I've got. I just need, like, three of them. Three of my favorites. This game has a couple of really unique and interesting systems for a very, very expansive weapons library. <laughs> There's so many weapons and items at your disposal and interesting uh, ways to interact with the AI. Some of the, I, I would say that uh, the AI is pretty good, but also very forgiving uh, when they're trying to hunt you down, <laughs> when they're seeking you out. I don't know that I can promise you a masterful playthrough. It has been a little while for me. I'm actually quite nervous about playing this one. I kind of expect that you're going to see me fumble a little bit. No amount of whiskey can make me a good enough player to get a perfect, <laughs> but I do promise you an entertaining, an entertaining run. 
Uh, let's see here. I know I can... Can I equip that? Huh. Yeah. Looks like I can, uh, I can just go ahead and equip that AK. I don't know if I want to use it, though. It's going to set off some triggers, so trigger some alarms, you know? You can't use CQC with a rifle, too, by the way. So I don't know that it gives me much of a tactical advantage. Don't forget. Yeah, look at this world. Oh, it's got quite a unique atmosphere. It's got vibes. And uh, you remember what I was saying in the last, uh, in the playthrough of Sons of Liberty. Sons of Liberty. Uh, you had to, you, sometimes you accidentally lean up against the wall. In this one, you have to push a button to kind of hug the wall. I actually prefer the button uh, method. Less ca accidental camera problems. You, know, you just get all these camera problems when you don't, when you don't have to push a button. Man, it is going off. Who are these guys? I thought they were waiting for us. Hit him hard. What? What? All right, who let the cows out? <laughs> oh, these gecko are so awesome. They're just like a mechanical monstrosity. It makes no sense, but freaking intimidating as hell. Can you imagine facing one of these things down? Oh my god. Forget it. Forget about it. Alright, I'm gonna do what I can to not get spotted here. Oh, look at that thing. Oh, that's great. <laughs> get out of there. Alright, I'm gonna sneak around here. I think I can get up to the rooftop. I don't know. I don't know if I can get a good view on these things. The gecko just have like a really interesting and unique design. It's kind of just this blend of organics uh, mixed with mechanical. Just I mean, it's hard surface, but it looks like muscle tissue. Really interesting, and I think that's kind of the neat thing about going forward in time. Like some of the other games, when you go into the past, it's like they're doing this. Uh, Heavy, clunky, old-style tech. Oh shit! I'm gonna see me. Ah, I saw me. Damn it! I might lob a grenade up here. Sometimes they do that. Actually, they got those little tendril arms. They like fling grenades around too. Oh, dude! If you saw one of those in real life, you'd be shitting your pants. Those machines of war. They just send them in to obliterate everything. I don't know where they store their ammo, though. I mean, that's a lot of gunfire. These things are firing off for hours. Without a reload? Come on. I'm trying to get a good look on it here. That thing. Cool. Alright, GTFO. Let's see what's in here. Oh yeah, you can dive through windows, too, by the way. Yeah. He's coming right at me. This is a big upgrade from what we saw in uh, Sons of Liberty. Oh my god. Well, I mean, it's the big jump. They had, uh, in the meantime, we had, by the way, they, they used to take like three or four years to make a game. 
They're not like a lot of other studios that do a, a new game every 18 months. They're, they were kind of like a blizzard. They just take their sweet ass time. They make games that last forever. And those are the kind of games that I always tended to work on too. Like you can still go back and play just about any game I worked on. Except for maybe Final Fight. <laughs> nah, you can keep replaying that. That's still a good one. Ah, snake. I think this was the trailer. We saw a lot of this intro sequence as trailers, basically. I'd say that was another thing that was kind of a big upgrade with this game was the uh, we really got some good cutscenes now in a really good direction and the action uh, created a lot of suspense, good camera movements. And this is I think they were switching over to using a lot more motion capture. I don't know that they had that on Snake Eater uh, or Snake Eater was probably when they really started with the motion capture. Previous to that, I think it was probably mostly handheld. concept behind this box that says no room, no place for Hideo. This this box that we're seeing here. There's a whole concept behind that is that this dude, the director, man, I don't know, it's probably just a marketing stunt. This guy likes to pull marketing stunts, you know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> there's a lot of suspicion he's pulling one right now. And uh, this dude, uh, he kept saying he was done. He's not going to make any more video games. And everybody's like, well, wait, you're one of the best. Why, why, why would you stop? And he's like, ah, you know, I'm going to step down and let other people direct my games. You know, I'll just come up with the concept and let other people do it. And um, which is, I guess, what happens when you get to be like 40s or 50s. You know, you start to go, ah, I'll just hire other people to do my vision. You know, that kind of a thing. If, especially if you've paid your dues, right? So anyway, he kept letting other people direct his games, but then it never really worked out too well. <laughs> so Kojima has to keep stepping in to like go, oh, okay, well, I guess I better direct it because I'm the only guy that can direct a game like this. And kind of saw a little bit of that with Metal Gear Rising. Don't get me wrong. I know I just got a bunch of dislikes when I said that about Metal Gear Rising. I don't mean to diss, but that is not a Metal Gear game. That is not a stealth action game. That is just an action game. It is a good one. It's a damn good one. But it ain't quite a Kojima Metal Gear game. There's a difference. You, can, you can't deny that there's a difference. And I would say it's probably, oh, huh, you know, come to think of it. Rising was probably the closest thing to, like, a good spinoff for Metal Gear. Because, like, they had uh, some PSP games, like uh, Portable Ops, and they had Metal Gear Acid. None of them quite lived up to what, like, uh, Metal Gear Rising did. Metal Gear Rising was it, man. Uh, Platinum Studios, they knew what they were doing. And so here, here what we got is, uh, so in the battlefield they would set, like, uh, traps. Now, I, I don't know much about military stuff other than what I learned from Metal Gear. <laughs> but my understanding is he's checking for traps right now because uh, they booby trap uh, guns. Instead of a booby trap, he finds Hideo Kojima under there. <laughs> 
directed by yeah so that was the big reveal that hey guess what you know what he's not retiring he's gonna do one more in fact they kept teasing with the dialogue and the trailers that like maybe this would be his last one i'm super chatty right now i'm just gonna shush for a little bit All right, so guess what? We got a flashback to, like, why? Why is Snake going into, you know, the Middle East? We got to find out three days earlier uh, what happened. What was the event that set all this into motion? By the way, great narrative technique is to sh shove us into the action, show us what their story is going to be about, yeah. give us some of that crazy-ass shit that gets us going, oh, man, that was, that was some crazy action, and then give us the exposition as a three days earlier kind of a thing. Here we get a look at Otacon, who has not aged Otacon. a day. Even the dead have ears. Snake, we've got to go. You've got an old friend waiting for you. Otacon. The test results. Proteome analysis was positive. But the mRNA analysis turned up negative. The wrinkled skin, the hardened arteries. Your early aging symptoms look like classic Werner's syndrome. But none of the tests were able to pinpoint the cause. So... Well... Judging by how rapidly the aging has progressed, I'd say... Snake, let's try another doctor. It won't make any difference. I'm not an ordinary man to begin with. Not to mention Fox Die. That's a real colonel, by the way. Well, I'm not a colonel anymore, Snake. I figured the only place I'd see you dressed like that would be at your daughter's wedding. What are you doing these days? I'm working for an organization under the UN Security Council. The analysis and assessment staff of the PMC Oversight and Inspection Committee. Yeah, I remember the resolution being passed a few years ago. Snake. I came across some information in my work. Huh? We found him. In the Middle East. What? I'll explain along the way. We've got to stop him. Now. Before it's too late. Liquid's made his move. We found him. He's preparing to unleash his insurrection. Liquid is lying in wait 
in a Middle Eastern war zone. Track him down. So I think the idea here and what, what they don't tell you is that the colonel that we thought was the colonel all through Sons of Liberty wasn't the colonel. And we kind of saw that a little bit. It was GW. It was that AI. Now, this is the real colonel, and he's been working with PMCs and doing some research to try to track down Liquid for quite a while. Um, still working in the military, but not, maybe not a colonel. He said he's not a colonel anymore. So he's kind of working on the outside. He was, if you remember, he was the the real father of Merrill uh, from uh, Metal Gear Solid 1. So he's got a vested interest in keeping her safe and protecting her ass. So that's probably why he contacted you, the most badass soldier that ever lived, even though you're old snake, old man snake. Okay, that was just weird, but it's going to make sense later. All right, act one is uh, Liquid Sun. I think there's like four acts in total. That means like four major location changes. But uh, in the meantime, we're going to go back to uh, Middle East here. And uh, let's just check in with Otacon here just to find out what the hell we're supposed to be doing. This is Snake. Do you read me? What's the situation? I'm just inside the city limits. This place is crawling with lizards. Ah, uh, AT Corps' unmanned bipedal weapons. Officially designated Irving by the U.S. military. They've spread like wildfire among the PMCs. There are more of those things now in service than tanks. They've got tough armor plating and are highly agile to boot. Your best bet is to stay out of their sights. Unmanned. Pretty soon they'll have put living, breathing soldiers out of work. Even so, that's an awful lot of gecko for this scenario. Their numbers exceed the war price for that region. It must have something to do with Liquid's arrival on the scene. You really think he's here? You'll have to find the army's operatives and ask them yourself. Oh, and Snake? I went ahead and used the Mark II to scout out the area before your arrival. You'll find it up ahead. Mark II? It's a remote mobile terminal. Sonny and I built it. The Mark II will provide you with a map of the area as well as any battle situation data. You should find it before you do anything else. Okay, got it. The rendezvous point is marked on your map. I'll be waiting for you there. Octo camo, an advanced camouflage uh, suit inspired by the mimicry ability of the octopus. I guess it's the octopus. Uh, if the wearer lies still or doesn't move when pressed up against the wall, the suit can imitate the color and texture of the wall and ground surfaces, fooling both the naked eye and infrared sensors and stupid AI. And trust me, man, there's going to be times when I'm going to be laying right next to a dude. And just because I look like a patch of stones, he's going to walk right by me. <laughs> That's what I do. Uh, so let's see. I'll show you exactly. See that? You just lean up against the wall. Now you look like the wall. Hey, it's like you can't even see me anymore. I'm not casting shadows or look like a human. I just look like any old other wall. The other thing that was really neat here is this uh, sensor ring. I forget what they call it. But it's better than the Soliton Raider. It kind of replaces the Soliton Raider. You can see the bumps in the ring kind of show you the direction of any other soldier that might be around you or in the proximity of where you might be. And, uh, yeah, you can kind of see it. if I move, the bump kind of stays in the direction of the guy. I think it's a better system. It's nice that they switched it up. I kind of miss the old Soliton system, but... I was pushing things forward, these guys. They do not They do not rest on their laurels. They do not uh, fall back on the things that they did that worked before. I, I would say they damn near mastered the stealth game, man. Hell yeah. 
And that's why I want nothing more in the world than Kojima to just do another Metal Gear. And I know, I know, I know, you might not, but... Hey, uh, let's check with the Otacon and see what, really, what is exactly is we supposed to be doing. Your business is to rendezvous with the Mark II. Just follow my instructions and use your Octo Camo to make sure the enemy doesn't see you along the way. All right, here we go. Um, so I look like any other wall. Looking like any other wall. Nothing to see here. Nothing suspicious going on over here. Oh, I think, you know what? You can go to first person view. How do you do? Oh, shizzles. Why did that not set off anyone? <laughs> oh, here we go. It's the triangle button. And then once you're in first person view, you can actually like move around. So it's essentially like you can play the game completely in first person view. Super dope. Not exactly handy though. I mean, it's great for aiming, but believe me, dudes, like you need you need to see your character when you're hiding. Oh, it's like there's something some reinforcements. More of these guys. We don't we still don't know exactly who they are. By the way, I am going to be looking around a little bit. Petrobomb is basically just a uh, Molotov. Avoid unnecessary combat whenever possible. Yeah, see, they are, are they shooting it out? Side is your enemy. There's no point whatsoever oh, you got guys that just ran out of that building. It? Yeah, that's why. I think he was just, Otacon was just telling you that. So, uh, one of the things, this is the first time, by the way, that you could crouch while, like you're crouching while walking. In every other Metal Gear game, if you crouch, you'd immediately go into a crawl. Now, something that most people don't know, and I'm gonna let you know, and this is gonna, because I say this, it's gonna change the entire market on Snake Eater 3DS, but Snake Eater 3DS allowed you to do the crouch walk. I know, it's a game changer. It actually, they also added, uh, <laughs> it's, it just feels so much better. It, the only problem is the 3D has this tiny little screen and my old man eyes can't, can't do it. I can't play it on the 3DS anymore. I want him to re-release that maybe on the PS5 or something. Wow, well, fuck it. I want a whole remake of Snake Eater, but the crouching while walking gives you this feeling that you're not sticking out like a damn sore thumb. By the way, did you notice the light change? When you come out of the shadows, it like slowly brightens up. And also, when you're laying there, you can hold down the triangle button to like really hug the ground and then check this move out. You see that? It's the worm crawl. Do the worm. Hmm. Do the worm. Hmm. Do the worm. Hmm. Show me another game that lets you do the worm. Hmm? 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 This motherfucker's goatee. Before there was even such a thing as a goatee, we had Guns of the Patriots. The original goatee. It's the O goatee. By the way, I'm just grabbing stuff here because I know where they are. Compress. You're going to need that because your old man back is going to give out a couple of times before you even know it. Ah! Hmm. I seem to recall some dude gets shot right here and I must have flubbed the cutscene. <laughs> I'm just hoping there isn't a guy standing right around the corner as soon as I come out of here. Hmm. Normally there's a guy that dies right as you're crawling through there. This guy shoots him. But it sounds like Praying Mantis already cleaned this place up. Praying Mantis is a, uh... Praying Mantis is a, uh, PMC. I'm gonna try to... choke this motherfucker out. But he's moving somewhat erratically. Nope. Not that guy. That was dumb. 
<laughs> I was trying to grab him, but instead I picked up the guy's body. <laughs> well, there's an alert, and now that guy saw me. Get out of there! Get out of there! Everything feels off right now. I'm so rusty. I've never once seen them do that. Totally different. Never seen them do that. Is this guy gonna come in here? Holy shit. What are you doing? I've never seen them come in here, dudes. This is totally new. Alerts at 100. I don't think he can see me under here. So there goes the master playthrough. So we've already blown that. Holy shit. Do they see me right now? Grenade! They totally do because he just threw a grenade in there. You know what? Here's what we're going to do. Lean against the wall and just hold still. Just hang back. Watch. Ain't nobody going to find me. I'm blended into the material of the wall. They can't see me. I'm like an octopus. Totally fucking invisible. The enemy. Shit. <laughs> Damn it. This is so much for octopus. <laughs> fuck. Fucking fuck. What did I do wrong? What did I do to deserve this? Now they're calling for more backup? You need that motherfucker in the face. Okay, get out of here. Try to find me in here. See, they never hunted you so hardcore. I am not used to this. I've been playing Sons of Liberty. I got soft. The game made me soft. There's a door right there, and I'll bet somebody's going to come in here. I've never once seen them do this. Did they update the AI? They couldn't have. And look, they're totally coming right in here. I bet if I lay down and I go flat, look. Watch. Did you see that? He didn't. No one here. There's nothing here. See, there's nothing there. <laughs> Just this stupid octopus. <laughs> Nothing for you to see here. These aren't the droids you're looking for. <laughs> this AI is sometimes brilliant and sometimes just dumb AF. <laughs> he just, he might as well have just walked right over me. <laughs> oh wait. He just said, huh? Oh, that it made me nervous. But actually, that was pretty stressful. I don't know why they did <laughs> It's because I'm blended in perfectly with the floor. 100%. My camo rating right now is 85%. Do you see that? There's no way they could have seen me, even with night vision, even with a heat sensor. beautiful that's uh that's how old snake do it all right a little long timer man HQ. yeah this is hq yeah all clear all clear understood the state of alert has been lifted resume positions does that mean they're gonna run back through here no look at the ring the ring shows nothing not a and now we gotta work our way back. Oh man, I'm like kicking bottles around and shit. I'm not used to this next gen stuff. I've been living in the PS2 era for like the last two months. You guys don't know it, but my PS2 collection is fat. I'm running out of shelf space. I'm buying up every damn PS2 game I never got to own. Don't worry, I'm gonna play them all for you. <laughs> 
I'm going to play them all for you here. Um, and I'll probably play better than I've been playing on this one. Because I am just flubbing it. It's like I lost my rhythm or something. I like that sound. The Octocam. Octocamo. I keep calling it Octocam, but it's Octocamo. So let's see here. If I do this, I can do like a swooshy kick. Isn't there a way? I should probably look at my... How do you grab a motherfucker? Choke! How do you restrain an enemy? R1 restrains. See, I did that, but the problem was he picked up the body that was laying on the ground and not the dude that was still alive. The threat ring. That's what that thing is called. The ring that floats around you and tells you where everybody is. Yeah, it's the threat ring. Actions after restraining an enemy. Yeah, you can choke them out, finish them off. You can throw them? I don't know that shit. That was new to me. Yeah. He's got to have the CQC mark in the weapon. Oh, it just throws them on the ground. I do know about that. That's nothing new. Oh, yeah, there's a map too, by the way, dudes. So you can see, like, that's where we're going. That's where we're at. That's where we were. And those little yellow check boxes are um blocked paths <laughs> to wait for the legend to pop up the legend how cool would it be to have that as like a nickname the legend trent canuga oh you mean the legend yeah i watch his playthroughs of metal gear he's pretty good He's just sleeping. You can pick up guns dropped by both the militia and the PMCs. Yeah. Remember though, PMC weapons are locked. You can't use them. You can't Only use there them. There was some way to get rid of the locks. There is. I bet. <laughs> well, um, spoilers. Sorry, dudes. I'm, I try. I promise you, I wouldn't do so much in the way of spoilers. Let's see. I, you, I know that you can open up the lockers here too. Um, they kept that. A little bit the contact sensitive thing is a little bit tricky because look you gotta like wait until the right icon pops up just hide that body in there so something about this i really want an hd version of this game because oh yeah regain they had a bunch of licensing uh product placement i really want an hd version of this game because frame rate dude once you've gotten used to playing on 60 fps you see the shadow right there i do patrolling once you get used to 60 FPS, oh dude, it's hard to go back. Make a break for it. All ass, dude. Go, 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 go. Oh, this part's tough. Also, that high definition range, oh, dude, man, you really notice it with this game because this and like, Snake. there's a few Press other ones like kills on them too. Oh yeah. Rolling can help you dodge enemy attacks and get past oh, small yeah. gaps and obstacles. I ain't fucking around. Watch this shit. I thought you were safe up here. You wanted rooftop duty? Not anymore. I'm gonna bypass all this shit. So there is a thing where you can like hide. <laughs> There's that statue. Oh dude, check this out. There's this really cool move. No game. Look at that. You can like hang over the edge and then look. You can like flip around, bam, or climb back up. So if you wanted to hide in that little crack, you could do that. You could hide in the crack. Um, what's this? Is there a staircase over here? I never knew that. I don't need to go down there. I don't think there's anything down there. There might be rations or music or something. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, maybe, maybe I need to check it out. Uh, better investigate. Uh, there's a couple of lockers here. Where's my... 
I don't see anything on the threat ring, so I seem like I'm okay. I better check the lockers. Hey, is that a compress? It's a ration. So with this one, you don't heal right away when you use the rations. It's like they got all realistic. This was the genre, the or generation, which is not the genre. It's the generation when everything became like just a bit more like visceral or real, I guess you'd say. So, and I know you're thinking like, oh, I mean, come on, man, it's not realistic. But um, this was the generation when like GTA, you had for the first time ever, you had to hotwire a car. You couldn't just steal it. By the way, you see that? The statue over there? You can hide in that statue. This is your Octo Camel. Well, I don't know that I've ever even been in this room. I never come in here. Why would I? I think soldiers come through and try to clear this place out, though. I don't want to fuck around, dudes. I promised you an entertaining playthrough. I'm not just going to run around through empty rooms. Let's haul ass. Go, go, go. Go, snake, go. Oh, yeah, check that out. Oh, we got it. Bogies on our six. Uh, you do want to equip the compress because if you do that thing where he's like, ah, he grunts like that. If you do that. Oh, yeah. Got the iPod. Put some tunes on. Uh, we got regain. If we need some health. Ah, we got the uh, compress. Ah, fuck it. We'll just carry our SIGs too. Um, but uh, the thing is, is like, if you do that, by the way. Uh, let's say that you do the uh, the the thing with the back like that. Man, it could... Uh... There we go. We're going to use one. It can actually trigger the alarm. The guy can go, oh, what's that noise? Because you heard your back crack <laughs> or something like that. And I'm going to tell you something. When you get to be in your 40s, you start to feel that shit. <laughs> you'll, you'll relate. You'll get there. Everybody gets there. Well, not everybody gets there. You don't want to be in your 40s and smoking, though. I stopped like nine years ago. This shit was hard. But I'm glad I did. I was just talking about that today. It was like nine, year, nine and a half years ago. Almost ten years. Without a single smoke. No smokes. This is my window, bro. This is my window. Uh, should we put on some tunes? Yeah, um, this is how you had to navigate the iPad. <laughs> what do we got? We got uh, albums. What do we got? Mm, Hide Chan Radio. Backyard Blues? Mm, not here. Eh, it's not really good music for a stealth out. Ooh, another side. What, they got the soundtrack for the game I'm still playing? It's like in Spaceballs when they get the VHS version of the movie that they're filming. We'll put some music on. It's so dramatic. I think this is where we're going right here. Shit, go! <laughs> cheesed it. Yeah, you can still cheese it. Oh, this is a really good cutscene. Damn. This was one of the first trailers. And it blew my fucking mind. Oh, dude. The Mark II. Wow. It's All me, of this. Thanks. Snake, it's me. Huh? Otacon. Sorry to keep you waiting, Snake. Allow me to introduce Metal Gear Mark II. Metal Gear. That's right. Just like Rex. Not really. Not at all. Looks more like police knots. But this gear's not a weapon. It's a remote mobile terminal designed to provide you with operational support. Where are you? I'm in the Nomad. Where else? 
I'll be watching you through the Mark II. Mm, wish I was good with gadgets. Hey, I'll be with you in spirit. Anyway, because you had to dress up as a militiaman, I had the Mark II bring you some goodies. Starting with this. Put it on your left eye. The solid eye patch. I call it the solid eye. It's an all-purpose goggle that displays radar images and other data in 3D. You can also switch it over to light amplifying night vision. The rebels are out there. It looks like they've got the government's PMC troops beat, at least in numbers. And this is their home turf. Snake. I know this is a sneaking mission, but you'll need to protect yourself. Uh, is that an M9? Uh, it's got to be a uh, tranquilizer. Operator. Uh, operator. I installed a suppressor. And here's a tranquilizer gun. Oh, there we go. Yep. That'll do. I prefer to trank them. But I think it's silly, uh, single load. It predates the implementation of the system. By some silly miracle, load. it was never recycled. It's getting tough these days finding decent guns that aren't controlled. You coming? Of course. I'll follow you wherever you go. Like this. I'll activate stealth so it doesn't attract any attention. If you need it, just bring up the start button menu. You got it. Snake, the informants who said they saw a liquid here should be a little further up. Head for the rendezvous point. I've placed a mark on the radar in the upper right corner of the solid eye. It's a war zone out there. Stay on your toes. By the way, this is probably my least favorite uh, costume or outfit for Snake. <laughs> I, don't mean to, I don't mean to ruffle feathers, man. I'm just saying. <laughs> he looks really good in the Shadow Moses episode. Let's see. The Mark II pistol. Uh, ready the gun with L1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Press triangle while aiming to use the grip-mounted laser sight. That was that first-person view. The operator is a... Uh, that's a shoot-to-kill lethal weapon the solid eye an all-purpose goggle that combines the functions of several optical devices and supplies the wearer with a variety of tactical data the organization to which a soldier or attack vehicle belongs is displayed in the colored text blue text represents an ally a color closer to red represents a hostile target that's important to know and by the way you also get that map heat map up in the corner which I don't remember that being there at all, damn. Uh, the Mark II, hmm. A remote mobile terminal that allows or that follows Snake around providing mission support. You equip it uh, from the item window to enable manual control, useful for sending gadgets to uh, uh, the gadget in Snake's place. Yeah, Snake, <laughs> we are it's gonna kind of a schlep, have some but fun I've with that. But I've sent you data on an alternate route. Follow yeah. the mark on your radar. Yeah. You know what? Um, I think that's that's like going to be a good cap for episode one because it's they do a good job of like kind of giving you these cutscenes every hour or so. So we did a pretty good job sneaking in here. Um, I think that uh, right now we've got to now that we've collected all of our gear. Yeah, let's check out that solid eye real quick. Look at this night vision. Ooh, did you hear that? That's almost like uh, Splinter Cell style. Kind of reminds me of Splinter Cell, actually. And then it also has a. Uh, binoculars so you can zoom in how do you zoom in how do you zoom in with the binox does it say oh yeah wait an all-purpose goggle that combines the functions of several optical devices supplies the wearer with a variety of tactical data open the item window and press the square triangle and circle buttons to switch between modes yeah, we already know that. How do we zoom in? I'm trying to zoom in with the binos. 
Oh, it's the D-pad, guys. So, yeah, throws you off a little bit, but yeah, you can zoom in with the... It seems like the trailer was different. It had the uh, gecko walking by and like this whole squad of military dudes through these windows. Anyway, so I think that's a good place to... Um, that's a good place. Let's set it to normal. That's a good place to cut to cap it for now. We're gonna save uh, with uh, the codec. Does he even give you the option? No, it's not a. You actually have to go to the save thing. Oh, that's interesting. Otacon doesn't do the saving for you in this one. It's just straight up save menu. Hmm, less integrated. That's strange. Anyway, all right. I'll see you in episode two.